Hey, how's it going? Today I'm gonna be going back to seeing how Pokemon from other generations do in Generation 1. I've done three of these runs so far, and two of those were legendaries, and one was a pseudo legendary. I initially said I was gonna do Palkia, but today we're actually gonna give Flag on a shot for really no other reason than that I like the Pokemon. It's the first Dragon type in Pokemon that wasn't a pseudo legendary, and as a result, its stats are a little bit lower, and thankfully, it's not in that slow leveling group. I think it's one of the most unique designs for a Pokemon and all I can really say is that it's a shame that it's not a bug and dragon type because as it stands now it being ground and dragon means that it's just kind of overshadowed by Garchomp which is essentially better than it in every single way and if you're wondering how I do these runs I utilize the Sanqui tool so you can google that if you want to mess around with it and if you want to know the rules of my run they are always in the video description so check that out as well like all of these Sanqui runs I have to do multiple playthroughs to learn the level up moves as well as the TMs that they can learn and I'll be honest with you guys, I practiced with Flygon a few weeks ago and I just gave up because I thought it was pretty bad, but a few weeks later I did return and I got a pretty nice run for you guys today. But before we dive in, I'd like to quickly say that I do solo run content often and if that is of interest to you, feel free to subscribe to be kept up to date. More importantly, likes and comments are really what helps these small channels grow, so if you're someone who just never thinks about that sort of thing, maybe you don't know what to say, well I got you, you can just scroll down and you can type in goggles so that maybe we can get YouTube to actually recommend this video to more like-minded individuals and maybe we can begin to live in a world where a few channels don't have the monopoly on Pokemon solo runs. And with that out of the way, sit back, relax, grab yourself a Sodi Pop, and let's see if Flygon can maybe compete with Garchomp's run. Usually I make sure to have perfect IVs for my Pokemon, but with runs like these, it's just not possible, so we just have to eyeball it. Speaking of eyeballs, the name for this run will be Goggles, because if you've ever looked close at Flygon, its eyes are under its cute little goggles, so it's the perfect name and you can't convince me otherwise. Right from the start, and the reason I initially passed on this run was in the early game. Sonic Boom's not an awful move, especially really early. It's kind of like Dragon Rage's little brother. It does a flat 20 points of HP damage, and and it has 90% accuracy. You can see in the opening rival fight that it's enough to one-shot his level 5 Pokemon, and sadly this is probably the last time that we're going to see Sonic Boom one-shot anything in this video. From there, there's really nothing to say about the early game. I skip anything optional and I only battle the one mandatory bug catcher because the fact that we are using Sonic Boom and it has set damage means that we aren't going to get any more powerful by wasting time and doing extra battles here. As far as the rock solid Pokemon trainer goes, Sonic Boom can two-shot each of his Pokemon and as far as Flygon's Brock split goes, it's among the best, and there's zero problems, so far at least. Also, you might have noticed in the first rival fight and then the other battles I've shown that I'm leveling up pretty quick. Since Flygon isn't a pseudo-legendary, it has the very huge benefit of being in the medium-slow leveling group, and despite the misleading name, I think that's actually the best leveling group, and I think that's going to be a great help going forward. Anyways, I finish up Brock, and here's where the run optimizations and multiple playthrough experiences starting to come into play. Even at this very early stage of the game, Sonic Boom has already devolved into a very mediocre move. You can see how it's taking multiple hits to take out these weak Pokemon, and in my opinion, this right here is the biggest puzzle to solve for the entire run. Because if you were to battle the usual trainers that I always fight, the 20 PP of Sonic Boom will run out, and you'll have to either use all of your sand attacks and then you struggle, or you'll have to return to the Pewter Poke Center to get your power points back. Both of these are huge time losses, and not what you want to do, but here's the solution that I found. You need to fight this last here and have her walk up. She only has two Pokemon and the battle really isn't that interesting. You just don't want to fight the other trainer that I usually fight that has three Pokemon. You can just spam Sonic Boom a couple of times on both of them, and what this actually ends up allowing you to do is making it through this route. To actually get by here, you do have to backtrack just a little bit after the last until the color palette changes back to Pewter, and then you can return to the route. This means that the last will actually reset to her default position, and you can avoid the other trainer. It's a very small detail, but it really was pivotal to the run. And we're going to 
gonna see it here. We're gonna see the end result on the final mandatory bug catcher. This route that I did here allows you to miss up the two sonic booms. And since it has 90% accuracy, statistically, you will miss two out of 20. Hopefully you don't miss any more. This is exactly what happens in the run. I miss two and notice at the very end, I'm in exactly zero uses of sonic boom when I'm done here. But to me, it was very interesting that this is one of the huge problems that I had to solve of the run. Unfortunately, this does mean that you'll have to visit the Mount Moon Poke Center, and that means we've already healed twice, so that probably means that competing with Mewtwo is already off the table, but stick with me guys, don't give up on Flygon just yet. As far as Mount Moon goes, you just can't afford to battle any extra trainers with only 20 PP. I opted to fight the Raticate Team Rocket member before the two mandatory fights at the end, and you can see that on the Grimer, this is around the point to where Pokemon start to pop up that can actually tank two Sonic Booms, and they require a third to take out, and that means we are even more limited and we need to find a solution fast. But notice right here this very clutch 1 HP victory I pick up here on the Super Nerd. Nice. I also grabbed the Dome Fossil because I'm a degenerate and we can pick back up in Cerulean. Now it's time for rival number two and this one is extremely annoying. 99% of the time I'm against using Sand Attacks or Double Team in my run unless a Pokemon starts with it and you have to get through the early game. And I'm not afraid to admit at all that I lowered myself to Pidgeotto's level and I use Sand Attack first so that my mental health doesn't suffer. I also learned Bide at level 17, but we aren't going to see any Bide strategies today, friends. Since I avoided Sand Attack, that means that the Abra is nothing since it can't actually attack, but on the Rattata, the chip damage from the Pidgeotto and it start to add up. And I'm getting kind of low here before getting to that Charmander. From my other runs, I know that this Charmander has Dragon Breath and one hit, and it's a reset. It ends up not using it, and kind of what ends up happening is I Sand Attack, he hits me back with a Smoke Screen, and it kind of turns into a bit of a slog, but eventually I am able to pull this out on the first attempt. And let me just go ahead and say that Nugget Bridge is not great. We still only have 20 power points of Sonic Boom, so I have to battle two or three trainers, then I have to heal, and doing this too much would be a very massive time loss, and I've said this before in my videos, but Nugget Bridge and the route to Bill's house contain like 15% of all battles in the entire game, and I just can't continue being slow like this. So you might ask yourself, what's the solution, Matt? Well, I do slog through this two separate times to heal, but finally when I'm up on the final Nugget Bridge Mankey Trainer, I do hit level 20, and almost every single run that I do, I never use early rare candies, but since Sonic Boom is such a limiting factor on us, I use one here, and the magical level of 21 gets us a brand new move called Bulldoze. It's a 60 base power ground move, and since it also gets stabbed, that means our speed has just picked up dramatically. In hindsight, maybe I should have just used both of my rare candies at level 19 to get here to be a little bit faster, but I didn't because there's some other worries that I had in the late game. Either way, getting Bulldoze as fast as possible allows you just to demolish the rest of the trainers, and it works out perfectly that a lot of the Pokemon you encounter are actually weak to it. Flygon hasn't had the most elite early game, but we did survive it, and with some careful planning, we've made it through it, and that's the main thing to keep in mind. After that, it's time for Misty. We don't even have to talk about the Star U. I just crit it. We can move on. The Starmie is the hassle. It just has Hydro Pump for no good reason at all, and we take neutral damage from water attacks. The initial plan was to toss a sand attack and just see what happens with straight bulldozers after that, but what ends up playing out is that I'm actually faster. I get off a sand attack, it uses an X defend, and at this point I'm thinking, why not just use a second free sand attack? So I actually throw a couple more of them, and I just take the battle. I feel kind of dirty using sand attack, and it's not really my proudest moment, but this is the last time that you guys will see it in the run. Before the run starts to relax and get a little easier, I'd like to introduce you guys to the hardest trainer in the entire game. Don't laugh, but this last with the three Pidgeys gave me the hardest time and this is where I reset the most. Since ground doesn't affect flying tops, it means we once again have to rely on Sonic Boom and the good lord gave each of these Pidgeys just enough HP to barely survive two Sonic Booms and take a third to knock it out. Let me just say it makes me very happy that these Pidgeys have exactly 41 health and that they like to use sand attack. And I'm only going to show this one failed attempt because I refuse to give this last more screen time. But just know that I had four resets here and it was very frustrating. Picking back up on the SSN and here we get some massive upgrades for the run. The first is Body Slam and that's always solid. I also get the rare candy guarded by the gentleman. But the really important part here is that at level 25, we get Rock Slide and no more Pidgeys are going to be bothering us anymore. And now our move 
moveset's actually getting really good right now. We get to put it to the test against rival number three immediately, and I channel all of my Pidgey frustrations, and I straight murder his Pidgeotto. I'm wanted by the Pokey police. In fact, I think this is one of the biggest slaughters I've ever had. I crit not once, not twice, not even three times. I crit every single time, four times in a row, and that's a first for me, and it was actually pretty amusing to see. It was almost cathartic. I felt great. I knew the run was going to be good after this. And finally, friends, this marks where Flygon starts to come into its own. We have three really good moves. Flygon's leveling group means that we are thriving in terms of levels, and things are about to start going rapid fire as we rocket into the mid game. But first, let's take a look at Surge, and I really mean that. Just a quick look, because ground tops against his electric tops means that Bulldoze is just going to have a field day here. And the only comment I really have about this battle is that it's a shame that Flygon doesn't learn more special moves in this run, maybe like Thunderbolt, but that's all right. We'll be okay. Let's move on. We'll be skipping over Rock Tunnel and picking right back up in Celadon. My usual strategy of skipping the Celadon Pokemon until later until I can afford more vitamins so that I don't waste more time is what I'm going to be doing here. So I do just immediately go pick up Fly and then we head to the Rocket Hideout right after that. And today, guys, we're going to be streamlining a little bit. Giovanni is a very quick, very easy battle. Bulldoze is perfect for this fight and there's really not much to say about this one. And once I'm done with that and I get the Sylph Scope, it's immediately time to battle rival number four inside of Pokemon Tower. This one is also a battle I could skip, but I would like to foreshadow something that gave me fits in my test runs later in the game. This battle is an easy one shot, don't worry about that. Rock Slide and Bulldoze are really all that you need, but the Execute is going to be one of the biggest antagonists of the entire run. It doesn't look like much here since I have Body Slam, I fully paralyze it, and then I take it out no issues, but don't let that fool you. I don't have any great answers for it, and keep that in mind as we move on. So after that, I head down to Fuchsia, and this is where I made some more minor adjustments on the run. Originally, I was holding off on Koga until I got Earthquake later, but that route proved to be a little bit too inconsistent. So instead, on this one, I immediately tackled the gym. And Koga's not that bad at all, and it turns out that you don't really need Earthquake. Bulldoze is enough to get the job done. While the Muck and the Weezing do take an extra Bulldoze to take down, it's very easy, and more importantly, getting this experience now will help us out later. The speed portion of the badge boost is also very nice as well. When that's over, I pick up the final HMs of the run as well as the extra money items and that means we can finally visit the Celadon Pokemart for the first time. Getting the extra money from the Rocket Hideout, Pokemon Tower, and the Safari Zone gets me about 70,000 Poke Dollars. And one of the huge optimizations I had to make was splitting the seven vitamins that I'm going to get between proteins and calciums. On my initial run, I was buying seven proteins and while you do hit really hard and it's very fun to see, the extra special is absolutely key when we get into the late game but we'll go over that when we get there before progressing any further i do go back and i clean up erica originally i was fighting her right after the rocket hideout but it was a little bit too inconsistent since we're neutral to grass damage so i waited until now and i'm not sure of the exact level and the exact damage is here but at level 37 bulldozes neutral damage to poison and grass tops is enough for a one shot and everyone knows that tangle is not going to be an issue we can move on now we have access to Silphco, and you already know that I'm immediately going to that 10th floor to pick up Earthquake. It's our strongest move, and that's all you really need to know. Outside of that, I do make two quick stops that I normally don't do. On floor number 7, there is a Calcium hidden in the bottom left, and after you get the card key, there's another Protein on floor number 5. I want to get as much stats as possible for some challenges later, so I felt that this was necessary. And now it's time for rival number 5, and let's just dive in, and we'll talk about the first attempt before I go any further. Further. Pidgeot is first, and it's a one shot with Rock Slide, so there's not much more to say about it than that. And I foreshadowed Execute earlier, and this is where it starts to come into play. I just don't have a great answer. It can take several moves to take out, and it just loves to paralyze you. It's not a problem to take out on its own. I never lose to just it, but it just makes the battle very problematic going forward, and it's just very annoying. This means that even though I can one shot the Gyarados with a Rock Slide, it still gets off a of Dragon Rage. That chips me down. And at that point, I'm too low. And even though I get a lucky crit on the Alakazam, I really just don't have a chance. Charizard has Dragon Rage. And since I'm only at 37 health, it's just enough to force a reset. This result is almost inevitable. And it basically happens again on the very next attempt. Basically, the same exact thing happens. I'm paralyzed. And a Dragon Rage does take me out at the very end. The solution to this one was a little bit of luck. And on the third attempt, I chip it down. It misses Sleep Powder. And 
I'm able to just crit on the body slam and we can move past it. And once that's down, I make it through without being paralyzed and I'm able to actually outspeed everything else and I can just one shot the rest of his team. At the end of the day, it's really only three attempts and it's not that bad, but it was really the later rival fights where the nightmare started on my earlier runs. I'll be skipping over the pathetic Giovanni number two fight and let's just go straight to Sabrina. This fight is just a thing of beauty. It's four one shots and one of the easier fights in the entire game. I actually remembered to use Rock Slide on Venomoth as well for the few comments that pointed out in earlier videos uh, and we're just cruising at this point. Afterwards, I take honestly one of the most brisk swims I've ever had down to Cinnabar in my entire life. I have extra pep in my fins this week. I do the absolute bare minimum and after a flygon edition of Tombstoner, brother, we could talk about Blaine and Blaine is a complete demolition. A ground type whose secondary typing also double resist fire in general as well as having a stabbed earthquake with 100 in both base attack and base speed? Well my friends that's just the ingredients in a tasty stew that adds up to a very trivial battle and we don't have to spend any more time on it. And in a very rare turn of events for me, Fire Blast actually ends up being one of the key components of the run and it's a very important reward here but we'll talk about that soon enough. But first we need to run through Giovanni. Most of what I just said about Blaine applies to him as well. Earthquake just isn't taking any prisoners today and the raw power and speed means that's a wrap on the badge portion part of the game and now we can get into the late game and talk about some more of the problems that I had to correct from earlier. But first I do learn Fire Blast and this is my solution for that annoying egg going forward. There's other reasons as well but this is at least half of those reasons for the calciums and the Fire Blast edition and now we can just take a look at rival number six. First up is Pidgeot and you know how this is gonna go. I just channel the memory from those three Pidgeys from earlier in the game and we make it disappear. Rhyhorn is next and the only interesting thing here is how long it takes me to move around my moves before I finally put it out of its misery. I seriously take a while. And finally I can test drive Fire Blast to see if it fulfills the prophecy and its purpose and it's a one shot and that's exactly what we want to see. And I just can't stress enough how awful these battles were before Fire Blast and this actually feels really good. From there there's no reason to deep dive. I can one shot the remaining Pokemon and I just have the perfect answers here. I will say that it feels good to actually hit really hard with Rock Slide and you wouldn't think that just the five attack bonus from Flygon's base stats from Kangaskhan's would be that much of a difference but it is. Flygon just feels like it hits so much harder. And that's rival number six done and after a unique early game with some obstacles that were a first for me things really picked up and became rather easy after the SSN basically all the way up to this point with very few hiccups. Remember that in almost all of my videos you guys are watching the final product of multiple runs. It looks really smooth when you're watching the content but this is the result of making changes to what didn't work in other runs along with little routing adjustments and other minor things so that's just something to note. But looking ahead at the league this is where my first run really kind of fell apart and my second one wasn't much better so it is really on this run to see if I could tweak some things and actually get Flygon to have a good time. But first I do use all of my rare candies. Some interesting things here are that I get some new moves. Hyper Beam is available at level 49 and I didn't learn it and I'm not gonna lie to you guys I was actually blinded by this on the first run. I immediately learned it and I tried it out but it's obsolete. A stabbed earthquake hits just as hard as Hyper Beam. That's really all you need to know and the last addition to the moveset will be Dragon Claw. This is another needed move and it helps out a lot. This leaves us with a final moveset of Earthquake, Rock Slide, Dragon Claw, and Fire Blast to round things out. So let's dive into Lorelei and we haven't talked about Ice yet. Just like with Garchomp we are double weak to Ice and it's gonna blast my ass if I get hit. I ran into a brick wall here initially and this is where those calciums come into play but let's stop talking about it and dive into the attempts. On the Dugong it's really simple. If you hit the Rock Slide it's a one shot. Being able to one tap it was the reason that I initially took away some proteins and added calciums and this one is straightforward as it comes we can just keep going. And now welcome to the reason that I had to make huge adjustments. Cloyster just has too high of a defense for Rock Slide to take it out and when it retaliates on its turn Flygon is just going to fold like a piece of paper from any ice attack. The extra special here and the fire blast is what you need and although I don't one hit it here it does trigger a retroactive potion and allows me to clean up on the next turn. Cloyster was a real pain and if you wanted to be more consistent you might need to pick up that extra rare candy in Victory Road or have a few more calcium. So bro is next and this one is a lull in the fight. Water moves are actually neutral if it decides it actually wants to use them but I never really had too much trouble on any of my runs on Slowbro. And as for the Jinx, it's physically frail. 
I can one shot it, no issues. And at this point, I was feeling a little bit smug that my adjustments were just working very well, but Lapras is always there to bring me back down to reality. Rock Slide is just weak enough without the extra proteins from the other run to allow it to get off a critical hit water pulse to force my first reset, and now we can see some more Lorelei pitfalls. On the second attempt, you can see what it looks like when you miss your initial Rock Slide on Dugong, and it's not pretty. A non-critical hit can actually 100 to 0 you, so there's that. And finally, on the third attempt, we can just skip all the way ahead, and you can see me just crit the Lapras and we take the fight. Lorelei was a huge problem on my other runs. Being double weak to ice just wasn't great, and a lot of my adjustments and changes that I made was so that I can make this fight a lot easier and actually be possible. And the fact that I think I would have actually beaten this on my first attempt if Lapras didn't crit makes me feel like I made the right choices. But just think about the fact that even this bad battle didn't make me reset as much as that last with the three Pidgeys. Anyways, now that we got the tough battle out of the way, Bruno is in for a rude awakening this week. He pushed me around in the Dialga video, and he actually got a win in the Kangaskhan run, but not today. I do take some damage here, but at the end of the day, I just cruise, and things are finally back in order, and life is in balance once again with an easy Bruno week. Thank the Lord. As far as Agatha goes, we don't need to go into this one again. Flygon has excellent speed, and I'm faster than her entire team, and we have a stabbed earthquake. This one is the cleanest battle in the entire run. It's very trivial. We can just keep it rolling along. Next up is Lance, and I start the battle off right with a critical hit rock slide. In my other runs, it was a one shot without the crit, but since I was missing some proteins, that mean that the crit might have actually mattered here, but I'm not too worried about it because it scared us. The two Dragonairs are next, and this is where Dragon Claw comes in key. This is the one place in the entire game where nice, heavy, actual dragon damage help out a lot, and it's always a treat to see it in Gen 1 because they don't exist normally. I also have rock slide for the Aerodactyl, and it's not surprising that it's yet another one shot. And last up is Dragonite, and we have our choice of super effective moves here, but I do go for the dragon damage since it has stab, and that's the end of this battle. We've been cruising after some Lorelei resets, and let's just look at the champion where I made some final adjustments from my previous runs. But first up, ladies and gentlemen, it's Pidgeot. We've one shot it every step of the way, but this is where taking away some of the proteins actually hurt me some. I can't one shot it anymore, but it really doesn't matter in this attempt. If I have to sacrifice being able able to one-shot the champion's Pidgeot for a much smoother Lorelei fight, I'd do that every time. Alakazam is second, and it's a very easy one-shot, and we can just keep rolling right into the Rhydon. Ride on these nuts, bitch. I didn't even mean to say that. Sorry, guys. I'm keeping it in, though. Next up is the main antagonist of the run. Executor without the calciums and without the fire blast made this run so difficult on previous attempts that I essentially had to rely on retrying until I got a crit. While fire blast doesn't one-shot it, it allows you to take it out in the second turn, which was impossible to do before. But just look at how much damage this neutral seed bomb does. It's kind of nutty, to be honest, but the TLDR here is that fire blast actually makes this fight possible, and it it was a absolute nightmare on previous run. Gyarados is next, and this is another part where you sacrifice the proteins and you can't actually one-shot it anymore. So that means that it's gonna survive. It chips me down to 40 health, and I take it out on the turn after. And last up is Charizard. I go first, I get off the rock slide, and the double super effective damage is enough to instantly end the run and allows me to sweep the Elite Four after that initial Lorelei reset. And that's it, Flygon has done it. I can't stress enough how much I actually enjoyed this run. I talk about how each run has its own little challenges and obstacles, but this one felt like it had some really unique ones. I really enjoyed the Sonic Boom start and kind of figuring out how to proceed to that route with only 20 PP and then making the adjustments on what vitamins to buy as well as utilizing Fire Blast for two specific Pokemon in the late game. But before I go on, let's just take a look at the stats. Flygon finishes with a level of 62, but more importantly, it finishes with an end game time of 2 hours and 40 minutes. This means that if it was on the official tier list, it would be fourth place. And if you counted every single one of my runs, it would actually be fifth place because Dialga did this one minute faster a couple of weeks ago. This was a very impressive run. And the fact that you have to kind of slog through the game right after Brock, through Mount Moon, and then about halfway through Nugget Bridge made this run just very interesting. I can't state that enough. I love this run. I'd go as far to say this might be one of my favorite runs that I've ever done. And I think actually doing Pokemon from other generations that aren't legendaries or aren't in the slow 
leveling group might just be the way to go to actually beat Mewtwo. Just imagine if we started off with like an actual ground move or a dragon move or something like that. I think that this would allow Flygon to easily get like a two hour, 30 minute time or something like that. But that's if, ands, and buts. I do have some interesting picks for this series in the future, but I'll probably hold off a couple of weeks to stack up some more requests. I did say I was going to do Palkia this week, but I really just couldn't resist doing Flygon. I know the Palkia run will be good and we'll come back to that later, but I just wasn't feeling it. Anyways, if you made it this far, I appreciate you. And I think that's about all I have for you today. Hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I wish nothing but positive vibes for you. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Bye.